We are going to use a Zima board and Casa OS in this video to configure a full home lab with multiple different services in under 15 minutes. So we're going to jump right into it. And at this point, we're going to head over to Casa OS. Now with Casa OS, the point we're at right now is that I set up the Zima board. I hooked it up to my network. I found out what IP address it is on and I went through, connected to it, set up a username and password. And if you have any trouble with that, I have an article that I'll leave in the description of the video that you can follow to get to this point. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're actually gonna change the default port for Casa OS. So we're gonna go into the settings and we're gonna select change port. We're gonna have to use port 80 a little later in this video, so we're gonna do it right now. Uh, it doesn't matter what you use, it just has to be something that's currently not in use. So I'm just gonna change it to this select submit and what you'll see in the URL bar is that the port has changed to 5900. So moving forward, if you wanna access Casa OS, you will access it through port 5900. Now that that's done, we're gonna open up the App Store and the first thing that we're gonna install is Pi-hole. So you can go down, either search for it at the top or just scroll down and the default password for it is going to be Casa OS. So you can select next steps here and it's gonna take a few seconds to install. All right, so as soon as it's installed, what you're gonna do is you can open it and then, like I said earlier, you can sign in with the password Casa OS. And at this point, Pi-hole, believe it or not, is installed. So what you can do here is you can go through and you can either modify the ad lists or you can really make any changes that you want. You probably wanna change the password. You can do all that in the settings. I'm not gonna bog you down in this video with this but we're gonna leave this open because we're gonna to get to it a little later. One important thing, if you wanna use Pi-hole, you have to determine how you wanna access it and how your clients will use it as a DNS server. So the first step is going to be either modifying your router. So you can change your router and it will use this as the uh, DNS server and that means that any of the devices connecting to it will automatically use Pi-hole. That's the first option. The second option is to actually manually specify it on each individual device. There's not a right or wrong answer. It is whatever you'd prefer. But the key here is Pi-hole is installed. You'll have to go through based on whatever router you're using or based on whatever devices you're using and actually configure that piece. But to jump right back into it, the other thing that we're going to install real quickly is Home Assistant. You can select Install on Home Assistant, and it will run through and it will quickly install that as well. All right, now that Home Assistant is installed, if you select the icon, it will open and you'll be able to configure it. We're not gonna go through the Home Assistant configuration, but you basically just set up a username and a password, you can add some of your devices, and you'll be able to utilize Home Assistant. The next thing that we're gonna do and the final installation package we're gonna take a look at is actually Vault Warden. So if you don't know what Vault Warden is, it is basically a self-hosted password manager that is based off of Bitwarden. If you've ever used Bitwarden, it basically is the exact same thing. Um, so it is unofficial, that's one important note to uh, point out, but by using it, you'll be actually self-hosting your own password manager. So once this is finished installing, we are gonna jump into actually configuring Nginx Proxy Manager, and that's where this is all gonna slowly start to come together. Up to this point, we we're really just installing different packages, so now that Vault Warden is installed, you can click it to open it, and you'll see that it does open. So, this is where the fun starts. Earlier, we changed the default port for Casa OS from 80 to 5900, and the reason we did that is so that we can install Nginx Proxy Manager. With Nginx Proxy Manager, this is a step that's basically just telling you that it uses 80 and 443 by default, and these are the default usernames and passwords, so it will go through and it'll start to install that. With Nginx Proxy Manager, the reason we're setting this up is because it will allow us to configure HTTPS for Vault Warden, which is actually required in order to configure it. So you'll be able to get a full SSL certificate with Nginx Proxy Manager. And it will actually also allow us to set up a wildcard certificate so we can actually use various different domain names and access all of our services using SSL. So you won't get any of those annoying certificate errors. So the important point here is that you need to ensure that you have your own domain. If you don't have your own domain, you're gonna either have to purchase one or you're gonna have to skip this step. But I'll leave a link to Namecheap in the uh, description of the video. That's who I normally use to purchase my domains. You can use whoever you want. But 
as soon as it's purchased, what we're actually gonna do is we're going to configure it to utilize a wildcard certificate and get a DNS challenge for the certificate so that we don't have to open any ports. So I know I just said a lot, let's get into it. We're gonna open up Nginx Proxy Manager. The default username is admin at example.com and the password is change me. All right, so at this point, all we did is we went in and we set up a new user account with our own password and we are at the default page for Nginx Proxy Manager. So like I said earlier, you need to have your own domain, preferably connected to Cloudflare. Now, you don't have to use Cloudflare, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a uh, SSL certificate, a wildcard SSL certificate, which will allow us to create as many of these proxy hosts as we want. And it's all gonna come together in a second here, I promise. Uh, but in order to do that, what we actually need is we have to connect to Cloudflare and if you don't know how to do that, I have a video on how you can connect to it, which I'll, it's an old video, but I'll leave a pop-up somewhere. Uh, but you basically have to connect your domain to Cloudflare. And as soon as you do that, you can open up the account settings, go to API tokens, and you can create your own token. From there, you can use this edit zone DNS template. And then what you'll see here is that you can actually access the specific uh, zone that you want to use for this API token. So as soon as that's done, you can select continue to summary, create the token, and you're gonna have a token. I'm not going to show it here, but you're gonna have a token that you can copy to move on to the next step. Now, I know that's a lot, I get it. You have to be comfortable connecting your domain to Cloudflare. Um, it's not hard. You have to change two name servers. It'll basically do it on its own. But the reason why I prefer this approach is because I find it to be easiest to manage the wildcard certificate. There are other ways you could do it. Open up Nginx Proxy Manager and you head over to SSL certificates. You can select add SSL certificate. And what you'll see is that if you select this use a DNS challenge option, there are a bunch of providers you can use here. All of these in one way or another will work. For me, I have found that Cloudflare is the easiest. That doesn't mean that it's gonna be the easiest for you but it does mean that in my experiences, it's the easiest, so that's what I'm using. So I'm gonna select Cloudflare here, and the first thing that I'm going to do is request a wildcard certificate. So what this means is that I can use any subdomain that I want, and it'll automatically be able to use this SSL certificate. So the next step is that in here, I'm not gonna show it here, but we have to paste in our Cloudflare API token. This is what we set up in the last step. All right, so just like that, we have a wildcard SSL certificate. So like I said earlier, Vault Warden needs a valid SSL certificate in order to configure it. But there's one final step that we have to do, and this is where everything's gonna come together. We configured PyHole, and we set it to be our DNS server, but what we actually have to do is create a local DNS record for whatever proxy services you wanna use. What we're gonna do is we are going to create a domain here with a subdomain Vault Warden, and I'm going to point that to the IP address of my Zima board. I'm gonna select Add, and we're gonna have a custom DNS record there. Now. In Nginx Proxy Manager, what we're gonna do, we're gonna go back to it, we're gonna go to dashboards, and we are gonna create a new proxy host. All right, so in this proxy host configuration, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a domain name, and a subdomain called vaultwarden.whateveryourdomain is. We're gonna create a, um, actually this is gonna be the IP address of our Zima board, and then we're gonna use the port for Vault Warden, which is 10380. What then we will do is head over to the SSL section. We're going to use the wildcard certificate that we set up. We're gonna enable everything and done. Now, assuming that you're using PyHole as your DNS server, you set up the uh, local DNS record for whatever subdomain you decided to use, and you configure the wildcard certificate properly. If you select this proxy host, it should bring you to a secured version of that web server. So pretty cool, right? Now, a few other things that we're gonna do. First, I should have mentioned this earlier. You should set your Zima board to be a static internal IP address so that it never changes. That's 
Uh, very important. So the cool thing about this is that assuming that you go through and configure other services in your local DNS records, what you can actually do is configure other proxy hosts and they will function as well. And you'll basically have secure connections for all of these uh, proxy hosts. And the thing I'll say, being honest, is that depending on whatever web service you're trying to access, you might run into problems. Synology DSM, you can get it working, but you have to use a different, uh, different setting. So I just wanna be honest that it's not always plug and play for these specific services it is, but there are times that you might have to alter it slightly. Now that we configured all of this, the final step that we're going to do is we're gonna go in and we are going to install WireGuard Easy. If you've ever used WireGuard, you will know that the keys are kinda of complicated. Not complicated in the sense that it's uh, impossible to get it working, but you have to know what key goes where. With WireGuard Easy, it's insanely simple. So the only thing that you have to do is go into the settings and you have to modify this WG host and you have to make this your DDNS host name. So, and if you ever wanna, if you wanna alter the port here, you can alter the port as well. But the DDNS host name, you do have to have DDNS configured. I know you can set it up somehow on this Casa OS, but that's a little out of scope for this. Um, but this DDNS host name is what you're going to do to actually access your uh, home network when you're outside of your local network. So as soon as you save that, what it will do is it'll actually go through and it'll reconfigure the server. But you'll see that the password we had set was Casa OS. You could change that as well. But as soon as you get in here, it's really this simple. All you have to do is go in, select new client, give it a name, select create, select the QR code, scan that QR code from the WireGuard application, and assuming that you did the port forwarding properly. So inside of Casa OS, you will see here in the settings that the default port that we're using, 51821, is for the web UI. So UDP port 51820. As long as you port forward UDP port 51820 to your Zima board and you connect to the WireGuard application, scan the QR code and connect to that VPN server, you will be connected to your home network. So it's really that simple. Um, I don't wanna downplay it and make it sound easier than it is because you do have to do the port forwarding. But assuming that you configured that, when you connect through port forwarding, and you access any of these services that we had configured, so Vault Warden we'll use in specific, you'll actually be connecting securely through WireGuard. You'll be able to connect to all of your web services using the Nginx proxy host names, and there's really not that much else to it. So when you're outside of your local network to connect to these services, connect to the WireGuard VPN, you'll have access to everything on your local network. Doesn't even have to be on Casa OS, everything on your local network but you'll have access to these services that we just configured. So the only other thing to point out is that in the App Store here, there's a bunch of different services you can install. But one thing I would recommend you install is Portainer because these are a bunch of services that they have configured on the Zima board and Casa OS by default. But by installing Portainer, what you're really doing is you're opening yourself up to a bunch of information online if you're interested in configuring any other specific Docker containers. There's a ton of information, ton of tutorials you can follow, and utilizing Portainer will make that a little more straightforward. As you can tell, Casa OS is pretty powerful. I mentioned in my review video last week that you do not have to use Casa OS on the Zima board. You can install anything you want. What I really wanted to show here is how powerful it is and how easy it is to configure all of these different home lab services because a lot of this stuff is pretty complicated if you try to configure it on other operating systems. I mean, I've configured WireGuard on various systems. I would say that a Raspberry Pi is arguably one of the easiest and this puts that to shame. This is super, super simple. So I'm hopeful that you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you like this type of content, please consider subscribing to the channel. And if not, I will see you next time.